Hi, I'm David from 3D Make It, and I'm going to show you how to change your hot end if you've made a silly mistake. Let's go! So recently, I got my hands on some Color Fab Brass Fill PLA. So basically, it's plastic PLA filament that's filled with brass parts. The filament itself is fairly rough when you touch it, but the printing instructions aren't that much different than regular PLA. It says 210, you can go up to 100 millimeters per second, so it's fairly straightforward. So I tried this filament on my CR10S uh, probably about six months ago and the results was a completely ruined hot end. I was printing with a hardened steel nozzle, so that should have been okay uh, being a filled filament here, but uh, nonetheless, the uh, CR10 uh, nozzle gave out and uh, it leaked through, it seeped through, it completely filled with this lovely brass fill metal filament. So I ended up with basically a hunk of metal inside my printer. So I had to take the nozzle off, replace it, and uh, fix it, do it again. Now, recently I got it in my head, well, I've got a better printer set up now on my Ender. Let's try it again. The prints came out great. Uh, let's take a look at these pictures. So you can see that my head is the one that I actually printed on my Ender and uh, it printed perfectly. I got took the filament out after, put regular PLA back in and no problem, uh, or so I thought. <laughs> it, same thing happened. The, the filled filament backed up in the stock hot end and I have a completely ruined hot end. So tonight I'm going to take you through on uh, changing the hot end on a, a Creality product. I'm going to be using a Micro Swiss all metal hot end uh, replacement for the CR10, 10S, and Ender 3 and 3 Pro. Uh, they're all the same, it's all si similar, so uh, let's get right into it. Alright, so first thing first is you got to take off your shroud, which is really easy. It's two screws uh, right here and here. The next thing uh, you're going to want to do is uh, take off the hot end. Now, since I'm replacing the whole thing, including the heater core here, I'm just going to take everything off. Um, you can see that I've got my uh, Capricorn tube out, so I'm ready to go there. So I'm just going to tuck that right here, and then we're just going to pop these screws out. So I'm just going to take these screws out of the heat hot end there and set them aside. Uh, next thing that I'm going to do is actually take the uh, heater core out. So we can see that right there. And I'm going to take the thermistor off. And again, it's fairly straightforward. The thermistor is just a, a little um, Allen key, or sorry, Phillips screw on this one in the side. So I'm just going to grab my Phillips bits here uh, for that one. And then the other one that we got to get out are the, there's a, a little grub screw here. Let's see, right here. And that one is going to be to hold the heater core in. So let's grab that one first and then we'll, uh, we'll get the other one out. I think this will be the right. All right, now that we've got everything off, we'll open up our hot end kit here. So in the kit, we have a aluminum heat sink uh, and the heat sink actually has the titanium throat on it, so that's what makes it all metal. There's no Teflon tubing through it. We have the new aluminum heating block. We have the nozzle. And the nozzle is a hardened steel and coated from Micro Swiss. Uh, they give us uh, a couple of throat tube holders. Uh, we get an Allen key in there and the two screws to hold the um, 
hot end to the plate here when we're done. Um, they give us a silicone sock to go on. And I do believe it's a seven millimeter uh, wrench there to hold the throat tube in while we're working. So the first thing we'll do is just get this all assembled. So to start with, we take our aluminum heating block. We can see that there's a hole in the top here uh, for our titanium throat. We have the heater core cord, two screws on the bottom. So the way I'm holding it is front. So what we'll do is we'll very carefully take the titanium throat and we're going to screw it in there. You want to make sure here that you actually uh, don't cross thread or anything. Now we're not going for Gorilla Tight yet. We just want it in there and then you can even back it off just a bit. So once we get that in there, uh, what, we'll, what we'll do here is we'll take our wrench that came with it and we can just very, very gently come around the thread here and tighten it. And I didn't go too far and the wrench actually only goes on one way. So I just gave it a little tighten there. So the next thing we're going to do uh, now that we have the throat tube in is we're going to take and install the nozzle. So we have our heater core and our throat in. Um, I have the nozzle in this hand here. So same thing, just turn it over. I'm going to thread that nozzle in. And again, you want to make sure you're not cross threading anything. But you're just going to put it in. And this one you just kind of want snug, not super snug. And then we'll leave it like this for now. So the next step is going to be actually putting the heater core and the thermistor back into our heating block. All right, so now that we have the nozzle in, the next part is actually installing the thermistor and the heat core. So the heat core just slides in the hole. The thermistor is a little tricky because you have the, uh, the bottom here and you just feed the little thermistor bead into the hole and then you're just going to tighten up this screw. Now I always put the screw in first and then wrap the thermistor cable around it and then that way I can get my fingers in and kind of hold everything in place. Now you want to be a bit careful with the uh, the thermistor uh, screw here because the wire is very very thin and it's easy to break and if you break it you're just going to get uh, Awesome airs, either min or max temp, depends how it breaks. The heater core is fairly easy, as uh, well, it's a lot easier than the, uh, the thermistor there. You push it in, and we need our smaller Allen key, and we're just going to tighten the uh, screws on the bottom here just a bit. And those ones actually squish the, uh, the groove in right there in that heater core together onto the heater core. So right now everything is relatively tight but we, we haven't uh, Superman put anything together so the nozzle was finger tight. We did screw tight the uh, the throat on the top here and this screw is tight-ish but we're uh, we're gonna come back we're gonna make sure everything looks good nothing's gonna flop out um, and then once we're sure everything is fine uh, we'll tighten everything up after we heat it up. The next step involves our aluminum heat sink. There's a tiny grub screw that comes in the package and we make sure that we set it in and we give it one turn full so it's in but not uh, tight yet because our throat sits onto the heat sink. I hold both tight and when I'm sure that they're both tight and this is important you want to make sure that the throat is butted right up against the channel inside our heat sink. I'm just going to grab this and I tighten it. Now we're not going for super gorilla tight here or anything like that yet because what's going to happen and I mentioned it before is at the end we actually heat up the printer and tighten everything again but we just want to make sure like I said that the aluminum heat sink is tight against the throat. And once you're sure, you just kind of give it a turn. And voila, we have a heat sink attached. So one of the last things we do is we take our screws from the package. Uh, they're the longer ones that came with it. 
and we're going to take and we're going to put install our hot end back on to the heating plate here so um, there's two screw holes that are kind of extended here and those are the ones we're aiming for and I'll just get that one loosely tight so it holds it I'm gonna grab the other one and we'll put that screw in and we want to make sure because there is a bit of wobble inside of that and uh, so what we want to do is just make sure that we're tight now you could see when I uh, grab my uh, core here it's a little loose but that's okay because we can fix that in a second and then we'll arrange the grub screw and the assembly so all we're going to do to fix that is only grab this turn it so it's tight again and then I'm just going to unscrew our grub screw and from doing that I can just slightly recenter that core until it looks nice all the while keeping upward pressure to make sure that the throat and there's no space in here to cause leakage so the throat is butted right up against that aluminum heat sink again no worries and it's not super deadly tight it's straight here so we can go ahead and uh, we can put our Bowden tube in uh, I'll just gonna give this guy a little bit more tighten so this parts fairly easy um, I've already cut my tube from the burnt part there is about this far that burnt up the filament but this is super easy all you do is push and so you can't push anymore and then you let go and this actually pops up but they send these awesome little retaining clips for that uh, heat sink there so I just kind of grab it and then you push it on And that pushes the sock up and, and the connector above and holds everything nice and tight. I can't pull the P PTFE tube out and I think we're good. So as one last step, I want to set my temperature up to uh, 210 uh, into my printing range on the hot end. So I use my OctoPrint control and I'm just going to grab that. So I'm just going to tighten that grub screw up a tiny, tiny bit um, now that it's all hot in there. So I just grab it and I tighten it. And so now it's tight. Um, I could, if I want, give it one more, I guess, normal torque spin from the Allen key here. Yeah, she's tight. Okay, uh, the next thing is, is I'm going to take my, uh, my wrench. So I have a socket and I have the screwdriver that came with the kit and I'm going to get the, or the, sorry, the wrench that came with the kit and I got that on there. And so now that I got that on there, I'm going to grab and hold that throat tube and tighten my nozzle and throat at the same time. Now, <laughs> Hercules strength is not required here. If you go too tight, you're gonna have a hard time getting it off. But just a quick tighten. Now, everything looks relatively straight still. I'm happy with how it looks on the throat tube there. So I'm gonna cool down the printer and come back. All right, so we're cooled down a bit. I'm just gonna add the silicone sock into the mix here. So there's a gap on one side that goes towards our cables and we're just gonna push on the sock from both sides. Now, uh, if you have a little bit of problem on the back, just grab an Allen key to kind of help you up on the back there. Uh, and it slides right on. It holds fairly nice. Uh, no worries. The one side, uh, uh, it is a little warm right now, but the silicone actually cools it down for me to put it on. So the last step, in the the chain of things is just going to be to put our shroud back on so let's grab our shroud we're just going to flip it over we'll set it there gently and uh i got my shroud screws from before and i'm going to just tighten that top one a bit 
just so that it holds my whole assembly on. And then I'm going to grab the other one and tighten it up. Um, now with the shroud, you just want to make sure that your heater cables are on the inside of the shroud as well as the front fan and that the uh, fan, the cooling fan doesn't go into the shroud when you're installing it. Uh, you could rip the cables then. So the other one just goes on the side here. So we'll do that one quick. All right, and we're in. And we're nice and tight there. Awesome. Okay, we're almost there. We've got the hot end on. The very last thing we're going to do is tune the PID settings for the extruder. This is important to do because we changed the hot end, which means the all metal will react differently than the Teflon to heat changes. So when we tune the PID settings, it tells the heater core when to turn on and off to heat that aluminum block. It's very easy to do. You need something that can access the G code of your printer. I'm using OctoPrint. So I go into my OctoPrint and I go to the terminal. You can use Projeface or anything. Now I ran these commands before time because they do take about 10 minutes. So the first command you're going to want to run is this M303E0S210C3. And what all that means is I'm going to test the PID settings, that's the M303, automatically. I'm going to do it on E0, so my hot end. I'm going to do it on, at uh, 210 degrees. That's what the S stands for, and the C stands for cycle. So it's going to do it three times. So the PID settings will run, and it will basically turn the hot end on and off, up and down, until it gets through three cycles. It gives you the results as it's coming. Gives you how long it took and everything like that. And then when it finishes, it says PID auto tune finished. Make sure you put the KP, KI, KD constants into your configuration H. And the configuration H is your firmware. Now, on my printer, it's an uh, Ender 3 right now, uh, Pro, and I haven't flashed the bootloader yet. That's coming up. But since I haven't, I'm just going to write it to the firmware as it is now and then add it in later to my uh, offline copy of the firmware. So to write it to the printer as of right now, we're going to type M301P and then we're going to use the P value. So in my case, it's 22.47. Uh, my uh, I value is 2.13 and the D value is 59.12. So I'm just going to hit send. So that should, in theory, send and save to my printer. So you can see M301 sent. Uh, the printer said, okay, I got it. The last thing we're going to do is an M500, just to save the firmware settings. So I hit send, I wait a second, and echo settings stored. Perfect. We're going to do an M503, and that one is to show the settings. So possibly the two most important commands that you can remember in Marlin and on the G-code side of things are M503 to see your settings, and M500 to save your settings. You can also reset your settings with commands, but for there, we'll leave it. So if we look in our settings now, we can see all of our default rates, but we can also see at the very end, now that we have saved our PID settings, they're in there and ready to go. So that's it in a nutshell. Thanks for following me on that. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments or reach out to us through our Facebook groups and pages. You can find the URL for that in the description. You guys have been awesome. I hope you have a great weekend and a great night. See you later.